Yo, what's good, you too? This is Jay from TNJ. And we are heading into the last game of the season versus UNLV, who we did move into the Pac-12 here in Season 5. We did want a little bit of competition. We swapped uh, them and Cal. And Cal is actually on top of the Mountain West. No surprise there. They should be. But just looking at who we are actually going to be going up against. Stanford in the Conference Championship. Win or lose here, we will be playing Stanford. And we are going up against a UNLV team who didn't have the greatest of first years in the Pac-12. But they went 5-6. and six. It's actually better than what Cal did. Cal actually only had two wins last year. So I guess it was a good swap. But we are going into this last game. You see they are 6-1 and one in their conference. And they are 8-3 and three overall. And this was actually, you know, one of the things that I want to do a little bit, just making the Pac-12 a little bit more tough. I don't know how I'm going to do that next season. We'll have to see. Maybe it'll even involve uh, SJSU moving to a full-time independent. I don't know. But let's just look at the stats here towards the end of the season. Denzel Knox runs for 1,200 yards, 27 touchdowns. What a season he's had, 5.7 average, his highest in his career so far only two years of starting but he's having a pretty good season on top of the heisman list so let's look at our receivers pretty much the story of this franchise of this dynasty has been that you know all of our receivers have pretty much been equal we haven't had any superstar receiver we've had good running backs and we've had good, good quarterback play but not really good receiver play i'm pretty sure our defense has been carrying us so far in this dynasty along with Terrence Miller and Andre Armstead leading the way. And they are leading our team in sacks once again for the third straight year. And we've been spoiled by good pass rush and good cornerback play. So, you know, I'm pretty proud of this team. This was a young team. I thought that, you know, we would be taking a step back on offense because we did, you know, lose some players. And, you know, Sammy Baldwin, Champagne Green stepped up. So we're heading into this last game of the season, and this is the episode to submit your recruit. So make sure you get that information in. The template is going to be in the description, so you do want to make sure you get that in. I wanted to make sure I got those in the last game of the season since it is kind of a, you know, it's a not a great team. We're going up against here UNLV, and we are on the road. So I want to get, you know, just, just put an interesting story in. I'll kind of let you know throughout this game what I'm looking for and what positions I'm really targeting. Because going into season six, we are continuing this dynasty in season six. And uh, I do want to kind of build up the defense again because we are gonna be graduating a couple of guys, you know, on the receiving end of things. We do have some red shirts that are gonna be probably starting next season at receiver. So I'm not really looking for offense per se. But I would say running back is a position that you might want to submit because we do have Denzel Knox. You never know what's going to happen with him. He could go pro within the next couple of years. He's having a pro type of season anyway. But I, I'm pretty sure that pro scouts probably want to see that on a consistent basis. Here's a throw across the middle. That's Carl Wolf getting into the end zone to start out this game for 11 yards for the touchdown. So just talking about our offense some more, Drayvon Jennings is going to be graduating come next season. So uh, you never know with him. He actually might go pro too. I don't know how this game actually determines that. I think it's just by overall. I'm not really sure. But I've seen, you know, 99 overall guys not go pro. So you never know. But then I'd say running back is a big position of need come the future. Uh, we don't really have a future at running back there. Uh, Daniel Dunn, we did recruit him. I would say he's probably in line, but you never know how it will play out. He's an athlete actually, so... You never know where he's going to play. And then on defense, like I said, I want to build up this defense a little bit. I'm going to need some safeties. Marcus Daniels, James Will Smith are going to be going into, well, James Will Smith is graduating this year. I'm going to need a replacement for him. That's going to be Zamir Hines. He's going to be a, re, uh, actually, I think he's going to be a sophomore. I think he's a Juco sophomore. But then I'm going to need some cornerbacks because Josh Hemphill is going to be graduating come next season. And I don't really know the future of him. Uh, Jojo Forrest is going to maybe have to step up. Linebackers I'm going to need as well. You can always use more linebackers as we get another touchdown on this second drive. And it's 14-0. I don't know if this game is going to be looking pretty for UNLV. 
But I want to just talk about this season as a whole. I mean, we had a pretty good season. This was kind of surprising to see us lose a game, but you know, I, I'm I'm actually pretty pleased with how we did. Um, I'd actually made a, a slider adjustment before the season to make it a little more difficult, and it seemed like that definitely helped. Messing with the penalty sliders is definitely something I highly suggest if you are running your own dynasty. Um, I suggest taking checking out Jay Kitt sliders on Operation Sports. He has an amazing set. I mean, it just the the gameplay variation is just out of this world. You never get the same two games in a row. It always seems like the computer's doing something different each game. I would say like the one thing about it is that if you're playing a bad quarterback, he's gonna be bad. Like it's not gonna be like a CPU quarterback with se that 70 overall is gonna play like a 90 overall quarterback. That's not gonna happen. Like last week, for example, when we did play um, a really good quarterback in Taylor, and uh, it was it AJ Taylor? Not AJ Taylor was a running back. Uh, I can't believe I can't remember the quarterback's name, but he was an accurate quarterback and it just seemed like, you know, he made all the throws and he finished the game. I believe it was 21 for 28 with three touchdowns. I mean, that's what you would expect about of, uh, you know, elite quarterback play as we do get into the end zone here and make it a 21 to nothing lead. UNLV, I don't think they're ready for the elite Pac-12 play as their quarterback right now. Uh, Oblad is a senior, so they're going to take a huge dip next year. And I think I'm going to keep them in the conference, maybe add another team or two, and just to make it harder and to make the schedule a little bit different because I do want to play different teams. I don't want to play the same teams each season. So we'll see. You know, we are going into season six. Like I said, this dynasty will continue regardless of what happens in the conference championship or the bowl games. I'm still going six seasons. Maybe even seven. We'll have to see. I don't know how many seasons this dynasty is going to go. But I do have plans for another dynasty as well. And that will be a team builder. And um, I might even use some of the recruits from this episode to kind of use in that dynasty. So you do want to make your story, you know, stand out. Because even if they don't make the recruit list this year, they might actually make you know, the next season or the next dynasty. And here's a throw across the middle. And Jennings makes his first mistake of the game. And that is going to be an interception here for Salou. And he pretty much sets them up with all right field position. I mean, it's not great. But here at the 35, here's Magyar. They're starting running back. And look at him running over. Wow, Andrew Jordan and his own guy. I've never seen that before. So first and 10. Here's a throw across the middle. He's got his tight end, Davis as that is a gain of 14. So here in a 21-0 game, now past the 50-yard line at the 35. Look at this hit by James Will Smith coming around the edge and hitting Magyar in the backfield. That's a big tackle, and that's a loss of four. So they do get four yards back here on third and 10. But James Will Smith once again is there, and Andre Armstead pushes him out of bounds, and they're going to have to settle for this very long field goal I mean, this is like a 55-yarder, and they're going to be way off on this one. And that is going to be another donut here for the UNLV Rebels as they cannot get on the board. So here's Denzel Knox. And then they carry up the middle for nine yards. As, man, as he had a great season, he's over 1,200 yards in this game, and he can actually receive a little bit. I haven't really showed that too often as Jay Taylor mostly gets in on passing situations, and... This season more than less than last. I mean, I haven't been throwing to the running back too much out of the backfield. I mean, last year there were tons of games where Denzel Knox even had a 10 reception game last season. This season he hasn't done that as much. I haven't had him in passing situations, mostly just the block. And like I said, I don't do any hot routes, so I basically just run what's called. So here on this play, you know, I'm not going to hot route him, but I'm not going to throw to him either. Here is Raheem Akusi over the middle. That's a gain of 14. I basically just picked the play and, you know, let it roll the way it is. So here is Jennings tossing out to Jay Taylor, who is in the game this time. He's going to fight his way in. And this game has gotten ugly here in the first half, 28 to nothing. And that's how this one goes into halftime. Can you LV even score? So now to start the second half, here is Oblad etched in the shotgun. He's going to throw across the middle. He's got his uh, receiver, Ballard, that time. Patrick Ballard picks up 13 yards 
And that might be like actually one of the first first downs of this game for them. Gotcha, Here's bitch. Oblad on the next play trying to scrabble out. He can't find anybody. Terrence Miller, the leading sack getter in SJSU history, gets another sack to add to his total. Here's a throw across the middle. He's got his tight end, Davis, once again, and we make the mistake with Adam Murphy that time in coverage, and we missed the tackle, and that's a first down. So first and 10 from the shotgun. This time, Oblad is going to roll out to the right. He's going to break a tackle from Terrence Miller, and he's going to get nine yards on that one. So maybe they're putting together a drive on this one. Maybe they'll get on the board. So a second and one play from the shotgun. They're going to dump it over the middle this time to Leslie. He picks up a gain of nine, and that's another first down for him. So now inside the 20, Oblad throw across the middle. McIntyre this time, and he's getting taken down by the face mask as now they're going to be set up inside the five-yard line. Under center, here's Oblad dropping back to pass. Gotcha, he's going to face some pressure, and he's getting sacked. And that time, it's Adam Murphy again. Adam Murphy has been showing up here and there in these videos, and he's been flashing something that I've, I've noticed. I've, I've pretty much noticed going into this next season because, you know, he's going to maybe play a bigger role. And especially with Michael Cummings graduating, I want to see what these young guys can do behind them. So now here on the first possession of the third quarter, after a good champagne green return, here is Denzel Knox breaking a tackle, staying on his feet for eight yards up the middle as he is just dominating the ground game here in this game as he gets another gain of eight. He just gets pushed forward, and this guy is hard to take down. So now on the first and ten, three and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. Here's a throw out to the left side. That's Carl Wolf for his Last game of the regular season here in his career. And just remember, Carl Wolf was a walk-on receiver. And look at him. I mean, he's starting. He's earned his spot on this team. And he's had a great career here with us here at SJSU. As Denzel Knox finishes off this drive with a three-yard touchdown run. And with that play, we are going to pull the starters as the second team defense is going to be on the field here after this following drive. Bruh. So here's Monaga. He finally gets an opportunity for an interception, and he drops it. So now third and one from the shotgun. Third and ten, gotcha, actually. Bitch. Here's Oblad facing some pressure and looking right away. Andre Armstead goes in unblocked. Take another look. I don't know what Magyar was doing on that one, but he had the blocking assignment. He was supposed to pick up the blitz, and he basically just panics. So now here is Ray Reed into the game. Want to get him some playing time as he might be the starter going into next season. If Drayvon Jennings does declare for the draft, which I highly doubt, but you never know what could happen. So here's Ray Reed with the throw out to the right side. That's another incompletion. That's an easy throw. He's got to have that one. As now that brings us to a third and 10 from the shotgun at the 50-yard line. Ray Reed rolls out to the right. He's got nobody to throw it to, trying to escape the pressure, but he gets sacked from behind. And look who it is. It's Adam Clayton, who was actually one of our recruits last year, and he actually did not make the cut as he did uh, gotcha, want bitch. to go to UNLV instead of us. And look at this. Emmanuel Thomas is in the game. He was our starter at right end in the beginning of the season, and he just couldn't do anything. I mean, he just didn't get off blocks. He wasn't making an impact. Guys are running all over us on the ground, and... It's pretty much been a complete 180 since we put Michael Pryor as the full-time right end. So now on a first and 10, here's a throw to the left side. He's got Everett, and they are driving on this drive versus our second-team defense, so maybe that's all they needed to drive. So now seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Here is a screen pass out to Magyar. Magyar is going to pick up a gain of five, but it's going to be a fourth and goal here as they do line up to go for it. They have no choice. So fourth and goal at Oblad under center. He's going to throw across the middle. He's got Marshall Phillips for two yards, and that's a touchdown as it's now a 35-14 to 14 game. So here's Ray Reed. I just want to get his momentum going a little bit, get his confidence up, and he finds Champagne Green over the middle for 17 yards for the first down. So four wide receivers set, three to the right side. Deep pass down the right sideline. He's got Mark Harrell, and that's a touchdown. Ray Reed with the throw of the day on this one. That's a pinpoint throw just to the right of the safety over the top of the cornerback, and that one propels us to a victory here in this game. Drayvon Jennings, another good game. Three touchdowns once again, and the competition wasn't as good as last week. 
but we get the victory here 45 to 27 they end up getting some garbage time points but number five in the nation i like it hopefully we move up a little bit as Drayvon Jennings does go 15 for 23, like I said, 210 yards only, but still three touchdowns as Denzel Knox goes for 86. He didn't really need to touch the ball that much in this game as we kind of spread the ball around. Just That's just the, just the type of mentality that this SJSU dynasty has taken on. Just everybody gets their hand in the victory on offense. No receiver is really the superstar, and that's the way I like it. So now let's look at the top five after this week. Nobody moves. Florida is still undefeated. Clemson is still undefeated, and Texas is. But Texas actually is 12 and 0, and they don't play a conference championship game. I actually want to add a couple teams to the Big 12 just to make it so that they do play a conference championship. I kind of regret that now because I want to see that you know type of dramatic feel to all these Power Five conferences. They should all have conference championships. So then Iowa is going to be 11 and 1. But take another look at this. Illinois is 10 and 2. How did Illinois become 10 and 2 as they have a better record than Michigan as well? And they're not even in the conference championship because, you know, Iowa is on their side of the conference. But it's actually pretty surprising to see Illinois as a top 10 team. So we are going into the conference championship versus number eight, Stanford. And once again, we're stuck in this same situation as last year. We need teams ahead of us to lose and we have to make it look great. We have to blow Stanford out in order for us to jump two teams, three teams at that. And it's going to be tough to do that, especially with Texas not even having to play in the Big 12 championship. So they do return a lot of the starters. Jack West is their starting quarterback, 6'4", 216. He's got great accuracy as a quarterback. He's not very mobile, but had a great season, 27 touchdowns. And they do bring back their starting running back as well, Justice Woods, for his senior season. And then Steven Stevens, it might be hurt. I think he'll be back for this game, but 10 touchdowns on the season, closing in on 1,000 yards. So that's going to do it for this episode. Next episode will be the conference championship, so you don't want to miss that. Hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.